All right, guys, um, let's get started. Okay, so in this second half of, of the class today, we're going to cover the very last topic. All right, so we're at the end of uh, 520 this semester uh, with the very last topic, which is, um, as you know, we're covering unsupervised learning. And in particular, we are covering um, we are covering uh, unsupervised learning topics. So remember that an unsupervised learning algorithm is an algorithm, or a, sorry, an unsupervised learning problem is a problem where you don't have labels in your data. Okay, so in unsupervised learning, you have the X, but you don't have the Y, so you don't have labels, and so there's However, even though you don't have the labels, there's still a few things that you can do with your data, okay? So in the previous video, we saw that we can actually use the k-means algorithm to cluster the data, right? And that's equivalent to assigning labels uh, via that algorithm uh, to all the data as it fits, fits into the group. So we saw that, you can see that in the previous video. In this video here, we are going to cover now on supervised learning as it relates to data, data compression. In particular, for this one, we are going to use uh, an, uh, a technique called singular value decomposition. So there's basically two main algorithms for data compression, principal component analysis, and uh, singular value decomposition. Uh, TensorFlow actually has its own version um, as well, uh, I think it's called NSE or something like that. I can't remember right now, but there's a, there's a big data version of it. But for now, we're just going to look at singular value decomposition, uh, for data compression. So this again goes back to the question Josh had asked about how to represent data that has 128 features, right? So if you want to plot it, a feature vector that has 128 features, um, and you can see that here. Let me switch over to the whiteboard. If we go to the whiteboard here, the idea is this, right? So it's not just for plotting, it, it, it can also be for data efficiency. You know, if you have a data set that's too large, you know, if it's got millions of features, you can always just compress it into fewer features. So basically the data set that had a million features and didn't fit in your memory now will fit in your memory because it has fewer, right? So that's a common application of this. So you have, so basically you could actually apply this to label data as well, right? So you can have a Y and you have your labels here However, here you have, so, the, the, so there's like two applications of this, um, at least. So you have a really large data set, right? So N is equal to, let's say, 100,000 features, it's something really large. And as you know, that will probably be too big for your memory. And so for your supervised learning algorithm, this is not going to work. However, you know, what you could do is you could selectively pick certain features and then maybe go with those features. You've done that with feature ranking already. However, this is another technique where you do a data compression. So you can think of, you know, this is X, right? The original vector is X, this one. You can think of it as X. And then you take this X but you're going to convert it into, let's say this is X zero, you're gonna convert it into X one, you know, given some weights, right? So you're gonna do an, another linear combination of those features to arrive at other features, basically. That's really the intuition. So, but the, the advantage of this is that this would be X one, let's say this would be X two, right? So this feature vector where this one has size N, this would have size M where M is a lot smaller than N, right? So that's really one of the conditions. And another one is that hopefully with these algorithms, you're not losing that much information. So basically you retain 80% of the information, okay? 
So that's what's called dimensionality redu reduction. So instead of just randomly picking features, you have an algorithm that will consider all the features to create new features. Now, you know, we don't have to worry about how that's done right now. So that's the, 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 the logic behind the algorithm. And that's certainly very important. But I think at this point, just knowing you can still use it easily without really understanding the, the, the details of the black box, right? So that's the approach we're going to take right now. So remember, you take a vector that was of this size n, and you're going to compress it into a vector of size m. You can see that. Now, the new features that you have, whereas these were x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 xn, these are no longer those features. These are new features. Call them, um, let's call them um, R, R1, R2, R, oops, R3, okay? And so you actually derive a new set of features. And the key and the neat thing about this is that these features are nothing more than linear combinations of the previous one. So what that means is that you're going to create now an R1, which is really W1, X1 plus W2, X2 plus dot, 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 Wn times Xn. Do you see that? And then the next one, R2, but this is for one. So it's one, 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 one. And then the next one, R2, so this one is this one. And then now this one is going to be W1 times X1 plus W2 times X2 dot, 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 W, X, N, X, N, except that now these are for two. So two, 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 two. You see that? So that's it. That's really the trick, okay? That you take the Xs, the original Xs, you map them to R's, right? And then there's obviously, now the key question is, how do you calculate these weights, right? So these weights are obviously calculated uh, based on some algorithm. And that's where either principal component analysis or singular value, uh, singular value decomposition come in. Okay, so that's where those two uh, basically come in you know, how you calculate the weights, but without, even without understanding how the weights are calculated, which is obviously some kind of optimization, it's still pretty clear that you end up with this. And just, you know, one important thing is you actually end up with Rn dot, 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 right? So there's actually, you can, in fact, you, you basically transform your vector to as far as here. So you can do Rn. So here they're both the same, but the key important aspect now is that you don't, you no longer need to use all the features because the features are going to be ranked based on importance. So it's gonna be like, okay, if I only use these two, I have about 30% of the information from the original data set. Okay, that's not enough. But if I use, R4, and let's say dot, dot, dot until Rm, right? So dot, dot, dot. So I didn't use all of them, but I only use until about Rm. Okay, if I do that, I get 80% of my, my information. And you know what? That's good enough. Because first of all, that's a lot of my original information. So whereas in this vector, I have 100%. In the second one, I have 80%. And by the way, guess what? M is significantly smaller than N. And that's really what I'm looking for. Because as you guys know, you don't need to use these vectors, although they're there because you can create them through this mechanism. You don't need them. They only capture 20 or less percent of the data. And this, is, and this provides you this advantage of being significantly smaller, which means that maybe your M would now be 1,000 you know, instead of 100,000. And so what, how does, what does that mean for your machine learning? It means that your laptop will now be able to process the data. And as it turns out, then you, you, you would first apply uh, data compression only to the X data. Remember, 
data compression only needs the X data, but then you can map these vectors. So you can replace the long vector with the new smaller vector and, and align it with the original labels. So you end up with a data set that's smaller. So initially you had this, why this, let's say this is size um, N and then this, no, to be consistent, uh, this was size uh, K. And then this is size N. Then you end up after applying either singular value decomposition or PCA, which is data compression, you only apply it to your X, right? So only apply to X. And then you get a smaller data set. Still X, still K over here. This is still Y, right? But this is of size M. So basically this vector has now gone to that one via this mechanism over here of doing a, a, a linear mapping, doing a linear mapping of the original axis to a new set of axis where you really only have to um, select a few of these. So you don't have to select all to RM, you only select until RM as long as you meet this criteria of 80% or, or you know, I just picked 80%, could be 90, it depends. As long as your algorithm starts to do well, that's really all you need. Once this starts to do well, you know, that's big enough. Does that make sense, guys? All right, Joshua, thanks for answering. Yeah, all right, so that's good. Now the other application, so this is the application where M could still be a thousand, right? So M, even though N was a hundred thousand features, right? Which is really big, you know, you guys have, I'm sure, you know, have, that's why we have Scholar, right? You've seen this semester when you tried your, your laptop, Weka would run out of memory and all those things. So certainly, you can see the value of this. Com and this is, remember, compression. These are only the, the traditional compression mechanisms. Remember, there's also the deep learning uh, compression uh, algorithms like autoencoders, et cetera. So now, when you have this, though, M, can you, can you now plot? So before, you couldn't plot the data, but now that because it was n was 100,000. But now that m is 1,000, can you now plot the data? No. No, right? You cannot plot it exactly because we can only plot things that are two dimensional or three dimensional. So here then comes the other application. Besides compressing the data so that it fits on our laptops, by reducing the feature set from let's say N to M where M is significantly smaller. We can also like Josh's problem initially where he wanted, he wants to plot for whatever reason, the credit card data, the, the fraud data, the, all the data, right? The image data. Now, are you guaranteed to get something out of that by plotting it? No, but you still want to do it. So a couple of ways that you could, could do that. One is if you have the labels X1, X2, all the way to Xn, where N is, let's say, a thousand, you still can't plot it, right? So what you could do, you can only plot two or three. So you could select just this feature and that feature, and you plot it in two dimensions. But, you know, you only use X2 or X3. However, you know, how do you know which uh, features to plot? Well, you may, maybe you'll answer, no, I'm just going to do feature ranking and pick the, the top two. That's a valid approach. Certainly, that's a valid approach. However, you are losing some information because all the other, you're only using, using two out of 1,000. So there's 998 features that you did not use. A better way might be 
to take the original data, to take the original data, which might be a thousand, right? And again, compress it. So it's still going to be K, still Y. This is going to be X. And now you compress it into just two features. So whereas these were X1, X2, all the way to Xn, these are now R1 and R2. So you're just going to have actually two features, or at most three. So what's the advantage of that? The advantage of that is that you could, if you'd like, to plot it. However, as, I, as I've said many times, be ready for the fact that the data will not look great. Okay, the data will not look great uh, because, you know, why? Because it's the same example I gave you of the intuition. If you see me, you know, you see my face with, with the light in 3D, you know, you see a lot of information. If you turn off the lights and you just shine a light on me and then see my shadow, okay, you can still make out some things about my silhouette. But for instance, if you're trying to do an algorithm that detects if I'm happy or sad, you can't see my facial expression. So that's not gonna, it's not gonna work for that algorithm. But if you're trying to do an algorithm to detect if people are taller or smaller, okay, a compressed version might still work. All right, so basically that's the intuition here. So you're going to then, instead of randomly picking the features, still K, this is still K. Oh, is this where, oh, sorry, this is where I was, I'm sorry. So this is the data. So now you're just gonna select two features and now you can plot it, or maybe three and you can plot it. But again, PCA, singular value decomposition, I think there's several others, but these are the two main ones. And in particular, there's quite a bit that goes into the math of how they work. As you can see, I've, I've given you the intuition here of how they work. So if I asked you in the exam, how, does, how do you get the features? Basically like this, and then select the top 80%. Um, so really then, that just leaves out that we can do it for like we did here, right? Compress it so that it fits on our computer thousand features or compress it even further it really doesn't matter so that we can visualize it just keep in mind obviously if we had used m equal a thousand versus m equal two what do you expect which one of those two will retain more information and the original was ten thousand so which one of the two of these two retains more information the one with a thousand the one with a thousand exactly that's it i mean hopefully this makes sense okay that's the simple intuition of all of this and as i said you know josh you did set us up really well with your question initially so now if you guys want to plot your fraud data which has 128 or 30 i think you know you can use this method to compress it to two Okay, or you can compress it to fewer features if, for instance, you're having trouble running it on your laptop and then maybe compressing it will still give you somewhat good results. Um, somewhat good results. Uh, but, you know, it'll fit on your computer, basically. All right, so that's the next thing that we're going to do. So let's now then go to the code. Now the best way to understand this, I would probably think is with an example. So let me share back to the scholar. Okay, so in scholar now, we're gonna go back to that original example of count vectorizer, okay? So if I can find it here. It's, it's VSM, right? So I'm going to do CP VSM and I'm going to change this to 
compression or actually singular value decomposition given that that's the compression. All right, so we're gonna copy that script and now we can go ahead and look at it, right? So, you know, we've already done this script, so it should be familiar. All right, so here is the original script. If you remember, we had what? We had a data set, right? Uh, we use count vectorizer in pandas, and then we had some sentences. And then we took those sentences, we applied the bag of words approach so that we could create feature vectors. So we use count vectorizer, right? We remove stop words, and then we apply it to example. And this created a data frame that we could print out then. And then, you know, hopefully by now everybody understands bag of words approach. Uh, the bag of words approach. So we were able to print out our data set. We would show the example, you know, on the rows, and then we would, we would show the vector representation of it. Um, I think we just use five features. Initially, this is just for visualization purposes. So we can try 10 maybe. All right. And then we printed it out, printed out the features as well. And that was it. All right. So let's go ahead actually and just run this code again. We're get, this will be our starter code for what we're going to try to do. All right. So let's go ahead and run this one. Oh, yeah. It's got a new name. So this is going to be Python. Okay. All right. So we did that. I just want to confirm that I'm recording this. Yeah. Okay. No. All right. So you guys remember that what we did, uh, we take a sentence, right? And then we pick uh, the top words, two, four, six, seven words right here in this case. And those were the, the, the most frequent words that were used. And those become the features. And then we pick from here, uh, we represent each sentence as a vector of these words. So for instance, machine learning is super fun, contains the word fun and the, and the, and the word learning and the word machine, but nothing, oh, and super, so it actually contains a lot. Python is super, super cool, contains one and, you know, cool and Python and super twice. Statistics is cool too, contains, you know, the features as well. And then we just printed out the, the it basically it selected seven features, okay? For this to work a little bit better, we are going to add, um, a few, a, a few more sentences. And really, the richness of this depends on the words, the amount of words, and the amount of sentences, obviously, right? So, um, but let's just start with a few more sentences here. So, so I'm going to add a comma here. And the next sentence, will, so I have machine learning is super fun. Python is super, super cool. Statistics is cool too. Then I'm gonna do um, data science is fun. And then we have another one, Python is great for machine learning. But then now I'm going to sort of change the topic. And I'm going to say, I like soccer. 
And then I'm going to say, uh, soccer, oh, I'm using capital intention. So soccer is great to watch. Okay, so you can see going back to the theme of clustering, how many clusters would you say are in this data, roughly? How many clusters would you say you have there? Seven. Well, that's, that's not seven clusters, that's seven samples. But you're, I mean, as an intelligent person, you read these seven sentences. How many groups? How, how, how could you group it, would you say? What, what, what two common themes do you see there? I mean, like, super and learning? Uh, well, the, I would say that the themes are, maybe there's three. There's one talking about machine learning, because machine learning, statistics, data science, even Python, they're kind of the same thing. Then there's the one that taught that another cluster would be things that are related to sports. I like soccer, soccer is great to watch. And then there's a third one, I guess, which every, it seems everything is favorable. So it's talking about super fun, cool, like, great. Right, so really there's three clusters of, of meaning, but if you only did two, you could argue that there's the machine learning cluster and then there's the sports cluster. Would you agree that that could be an interpretation of the data? Yes. Yeah, so, that, so that's where I'm going with this, right? It's that I can if I create three clusters, you know, it might be those three things, but obviously, we're gonna cluster each sample. So really the only thing that we can do is take every sentence and remember that a sentence, each sentence, so for instance, Python is super cool or soccer is great to watch, those are samples. One sample, one sentence, which means when we plot this, they're gonna be points in a graph. You guys see that? They're gonna be points in a graph. So what we wanna do first is plot them in a graph, and then after that, apply k-mean. So obviously, like I said, if I read these, I would say there are two, machine learning and, and sports. Sure. But an algorithm doesn't know that. I'm oh, sorry, a computer doesn't know that. A computer's uh, intelligence is only as good as its learning algorithm. So we're going to use k-means to try to do that, to see if k-means can try to make these, make two clusters where the, you know, the machine learning sentences are in one cluster and the I like sports are in another one. Remember that they're going to be represented as vectors. So the first thing we're going to do is vectorize them. So I'm going to use count vectorizer over here, remove stop words. Uh, I'm going to fit and transform example, right? That's all the sentences now. You guys have done this already with, you did it with all your tweets or all of your RSS feeds. So you've already had thousands of, of sentences there. You know how to do that. And then we're gonna print out the data frame um, into an array. The index is still gonna be the sentences. Columns will now be the feature names and we're going to show 10, let's say. So this should show more because there's more words now. So let's go ahead and just do that, you know, print out the results and see how this is represented. So I'm going to do control X, Y. Okay. And there you go. You can see that now. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 words actually that were used in this. And of these 13, um, these are the, the resulting vectors, right? So, you know, we represent them mostly as sparse vectors, but some of the values are ones depending on the words that appear. So here, Cool appears once, 
And I think only statistics appears and then two is ignored as a stop word is, is ignored. And so that's basically the idea. Okay, so now I have that and to have this be even richer, we would probably want um, more sentences, right? But let's just leave it here for now. You guys on your own can play with this and add more sentences. So definitely once we are at add, add more words to the sentences and add more sentences, the k-means algorithm will do better, right? But for right now, I'm not going to use k-means. Instead, what I want to use is actually, I want to do, I want to show you data compression, right? So that was the idea. So then we're going to go ahead and introduce the, the code for that. Okay, so that's new code. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to say uh, from sklearn uh, decomposition import truncated SVD. And that's just an algorithm for singular value decomposition. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. Let's see if it'll run. Hopefully it will. Just checking that the library hasn't changed. All right. The library hasn't changed. That's good. So that ran. So now I can go back to my code. And as you might imagine, what I want to do now is I want to compress that data from the 13 features that I have to a compressed version because remember, I cannot plot the sentences with 13 features. So then I'm gonna go ahead here, I'm just gonna write a comment. This is singular value decomposition. Again, you know, the inner workings of the algorithm, that's not Please mute your microphones. Uh, so that's not something that we can. Um, was I saying? Uh, that's not something that we're going to look at right now. Instead, we're just going to use the, the algorithm because you can use it uh, as a black box. Uh, I've talked about it. So we're going to create then uh, an object. You know, let's just call it. Um, LSA for now, just any name is fine. We're going to call truncated SVD for singular value decomposition. We're going to say that we want two. So we're going to compress it to two basically features. And now we're going to get a new data frame. And as you might imagine, all we have to do is call LSA, then dot fit underscore transform. What do we transform? Now, the question is, what do we transform? Let's see if you guys pick up on that. What are we transforming? Guys, where's your data right now? Where's your data sitting? It's sitting here, right? You took the sentences and you converted them into feature vectors, right? So DTM, okay? I'm gonna do DTM here. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and print this out. Just like we did before, I'm going to do print PD for pandas dot data frame. You know, I'm just basically running this same code over here. Okay, so data frame. <clears throat> And then now I'm going to say LSA because LSA, LSA contains the, the components. Okay, so I'm going to say um, uh, 
this is it's the is the model basically. So the LSA dot components underscore comma. The index will now be um, so I'm going to flip this matrix now, basically. So you'll see. So the index will now be the components, the new feature. So there's only two. So components one and components two. So whereas before I had 13 features on here, right? When I printed these, I had 13 features. Now I'm only going to have, so this is just like the labels that I'm putting in. It's just gonna have two and they're called components, okay? Singular value decomposition components, just components for short. Okay, and the columns will be the values. So columns will be the the actual word. So you'll see the mapping here. So columns equal vectorizer dot get feature names. Okay, and then close square bracket. All right, so that should do it. So let's go ahead and run this. Hmm. An error. Should be a parentheses, not a square bracket. All right. And there's another error. Oh, I'm missing one more parenthesis. Okay. All right, there you go. So what's important here is, if you, if you remember, right? Um, if I go back to the whiteboard, yeah, if you remember this in the whiteboard, here. Remember this, guys? So in the whiteboard, I said that you take the words and you perform linear combinations, right? So this here, so this word, these are the weights, but these words, these words get combined and create the new components, right? You see that? It creates the new components. And so in this case, it creates all our n, but we selected that we only wanted two. So if you look, this thing here is what I am showing here, where I'm basically mapping the words. Cool. So you just have to look at. So maybe what I want to do, so it's not confusing, uh, is I'm going to add print. Okay, so the difference. All right, so we are only really looking at this right now. And if you look, we take all the words, right, all the 13 words, and they've basically been mapped into just these two. Okay, so for a given vector, for a given vector, you know, we're always just going to map it from the values. We have these values, which you can think of as weights, I guess. And then you just multiply them by this, right? So here, for instance, I have machine learning is super fun, right? Machine learning is super fun. I take that one 
I multiply the ones that have a one, basically, I mean, it's, it's an intuition here, the ones that have a one with these weights here, and then obviously the other ones will be zero, but then I'll get my representation of component one. And then I'll do the same. I take for that same sentence, machine learning is super fun, but I apply it to the second vector, to the weights. Zeros go away, ones stay, and that gives me component two. So basically now, machine learning is super fun, <laughs> whereas before the vector looked like that with 13 features, now the vector will only have two, component two and component one, okay? And that's basically how that works. So we can actually see that a little bit better if I come over here. Okay. Now we can also normalize the data and we probably should, and I'll come back to that in a second, but you know, given that we're short on time, I just want to make sure I, I get to this. Um, so now what we want to do is uh, we want to do is All right, so we have the data here, DTM LSA, that's our data. So we should probably print that one out. So I'm gonna print DTM LSA, which is this one. Remember this is, we apply the transformation, right? So I'm gonna print this one now, control X, oops, Y. I think I'm going to hit clear here. And there you go. What's extremely important about this one is that this is your data after compression. If you notice, your data originally has seven, right? Your data originally has seven sentences or seven samples. If you count here, how many do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So basically, machine learning is super fun is this one, okay? Python is super, super cool is this one. If I take I like soccer, it is this one. But as you can see, they no longer, I like soccer no longer has seven or 13 features, however many that is, it only has two. Okay, guys? Does that make sense? This, this is incredibly important that you understand this, okay? <clears throat> make sense? Because this, this basically means, you know, that, that you know how to do the compression. You can take the data that had 13 words and now you can compress it down to just two per vector. So Joshua, now that you see this, this was the question you had before. What did you were using the, um, what data set were you using? I'm sorry, remind me please. Um, I was using the tweet data set. Mm -hmm. How many features do you have in the tweet data set? Uh, I believe it was 128. Okay, so then basically you had each one of these was a tweet, right? And then how many features did you have here? Yeah, that was 128, I believe. Oh, no, that was two. Wait, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I was, I'm no longer on that data set. Give me one second. I'm sorry. But originally, I mean, that was your original question, right? That you were trying to plot it. And so I'm, I'm, a, I'm answering your question now that I've given you how to do it. So you had the tweet data set, which has however many samples, each tweet is a sample, 
but you had not 13 features. You had 128, I believe. I think so. But you can't plot that, right? You understand that. So instead, we compress the data, which basically just like we did here, we would take 128. When you guys, if you do this, you'll take 128 and map it to two or three at most. You see that? And then once you've mapped it, this is what you end up with. So the 128 just become two features. And this becomes your new X. So as before, this was your X, right? Your X data. Now this is your X data. So I ask you this question. Can you plot this data that I highlighted? Yes. Yes, right? Because it has two features. Exactly. Do you see that? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So that was Josh's uh, question. And you, can, you guys can see now it has been answered. Okay. So now what we might want to do is we might want to um, plot this, right? So we might want to plot this information. We could plot this information. And I should say we should normalize this data. I just haven't, uh, but you know, because I'm, I'm running out of time. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead. We've already... Oh, I know, I know what one thing that I should do. All right, so let's do this. So now I'm gonna go here. I printed the data like this, but I'll actually, I wanna print it a little bit more presentable. So I'm gonna do print, uh, and then in here, I'm gonna do pandas dot data frame data frame all right and my data is now dtm lsa the index will once again be the example so the sentences themselves sample columns will be now remember now dtm lsa no longer has the words, it only has the principal components. So that's why I'm going to say, you know, let's call it SVD1 and could be component SVD2. All right. And that should do it, I think. So let's go ahead and print this last one. All right, so I'm gonna do a clear here. And what do you guys see? Your original data look like this, right? You have the sentences represented as features, feature vectors of size 13, I think, because of the bag of words approach. But now we applied singular value decomposition, which did this, and now we can actually even see it here. Each sentence is now represented as a vector of just SVD1, SVD2, because of this amazing little trick here of linear combinations of, of the words in our algorithm. And so now this is your new data. And by the way, hopefully this represents a good amount of the information. This is much better than just plotting great and soccer. You know, that's not going to be very good. Whereas this actually holds all the data there. So now what, you know, like kind of what Josh wanted to do is to plot this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and now let's try to plot it, right? So I'm going to try to plot this information. So first of all, I need to create two vectors. So I'm going to create X, S, which is going to be a list of the values in X, so it's gonna be, I'm gonna do a list comprehension here, W zero for the zero value for W in DTM LSA. 
this will allow me to just grab all the SVD ones. Then I'm going to say YS, and this one will be again a list comprehension W, as you might imagine, one. Or W in DTM underscore LSA. Okay. And so now I have my data there. Okay. And now I can use uh, matplotlib again. So I have PLT. So I'm going to create a figure here. Figure plot dot figure. I'm going to create a scatter plot, scatter of x comma x s comma y s and i can do plt dot show all right so i'm going to go ahead and run that one oh plt is not the i thought i was using it have I not printed any graphs here? I guess I didn't. That's probably the previous one, I guess. All right, so then uh, it's got to be import, import matplotlib, right? Matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Okay. All right, so let's hope it works. Uh, ah, there it is. What do you guys think? Again, I'll ask you the question. As intelligent natural AIs, not artificial AIs, how many clusters would you say there's there's where would you say there's clusters there? How many? Seven. Seven. There's seven points, not seven clusters. I would say then two. Which one? One on the right side and two on the left side. So you mean this one? Yeah. One, correct? That's correct. All right, good. Very good. If you said three, you would probably say this one, these two, and probably this outlier over here. That's certainly a um, possibility. So yeah, very good. So that's where we are, right? So now we've plotted it. Now you've learned how to compress. Josh, this is what you were trying to do with your data, correct? Correct. Excellent. And now the only thing that's left is using what we used before, which is, you know, we if you have labeled data, all you have to do is make sure you align these vectors, right? You just have to align these vectors with your Y data and you're done. And now you have a compressed data set that might fit on your laptop, whereas before it didn't because of the compression, the, the amount of RAM memory. However, another thing we might want to do is we might want to, <clears throat> so far, as I said, you guys are intelligent, but a computer is only as good as its algorithm. And so in this case, we want to create these two clusters. So how do you think we can do that? What about using what we learned in the previous video? You guys remember that? Up the, up the iterations. Hmm? In, increase the iterations. For what? Iteration? For the uh, times that we look at the data to group them. Right, but we have to, well, what was the name of the algorithm though? Oh, it was the K. Uh, each, right, exactly. So you're jumping ahead there. So yes, we have to, we, we or we want to really apply K means, right, to see if we can solve this one. So where did we have that one? Was it clustering? Let's see if I can just copy this. <clears throat> one to the other. So what do I need? Do I need make blobs? No. Scatter? Not really. I already printed it. 
But I do, let's copy the whole thing and then delete in Harvard. All right, so I'm gonna try to apply k-means, right? All right, I'm gonna try to apply k-means. I'm gonna control copy this. I'm gonna go to the other one, which is decompression. And I'm going to, now keep in mind, I only have seven sentences, guys. So that's the trick. We don't, we just don't have a lot of information, but the more information we have, the better. All right, so if you see, I just added now what we had from k-means. How do I save here? How do you save one? Oh, there it is. All right, it's saved. So now I've added, let's take a look at it from beginning to end. Hopefully I have everything I need. I have SK learn count vectorizer. I have the sentences. I already showed how to apply the bag of words approach. Hopefully you knew that from all the homework assignments you've done. Singular value decomposition, we've done that. I've shown you how to compress the data. We've plotted it. And now we have our data in DTM LSA. Remember that DTM LSA is where the data is contained. So what we want to do now is we want to create the little cluster and assign that to cluster. So again, we don't need make blobs, right? We don't need that. But we do need the k-means algorithm. Matplot, we already brought that in, so I don't want it in there again. All right. Okay, then uh, make blobs, so we don't need to do this one. So I'm just going to comment this out. And then the scatter plot, uh, we already plotted this data, so why plot it? Right, so I'm going to comment that out. And that leaves this, okay? That, this is what's important. So here, I'm going to use the k-means. How many clusters should I use? Two, right? Data science and, and sports. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do uh, random 300. You know, these are the full parameters, basically. And then I'm going to take now what do I apply this KM to? Do I apply it to X? No, right? What do I apply it to? Where's my data? Where's my data, guys? My data is in DTM LSA, right? So I'm going to, I want two clusters and I'm going to apply this to DTM LSA. Here, DTM underscore LSA, right? And then I'm going to get YKM right, which will give me the data. So then after that, I could plot it, which is what we did before. I'm just gonna comment this out for now. So I don't get any errors there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and run. Oops, <laughs> I'm thinking of a nano there. All right, so I saved it. I'm gonna go back to the terminal over here. And now let's see if it works. There's my plot of my original data. And there you go. Do you see this guys? What is that? How many predictions do I have there? Two. Two predictions or two clusters? What two clusters? Two clusters, but how many predictions? Seven. Seven, right? Seven. What does that mean? It means that 
for this one, it said that it should be cluster one. This one is cluster zero. And then all the other ones are cluster one. So what do you think about the predicting abilities of this algorithm? It's not very good, correct? The first five sentences <clears throat> should be in one cluster. The next two sentences should be in another cluster. Do you see that, guys? Yeah. Okay, very good. So <clears throat> we're almost there. So we, you know that the k-means, I just applied it to the compressed data, but it just didn't do very well which is something that I expected already that it wasn't going to do very well because um, it doesn't do very well because, because of the richness, richness of the information. The, the richness of the information is just not there. So let's, let's do a couple of things. Let's do a couple of things. How can I go back? Oh, I want to go back to this. Yeah. So first of all, we have how many clusters? We have two, right? So let's view the data. So the data is in y, YKM. So let's go over here. I want this cluster and this cluster, just two. I'm going to comment out because I had done six. So these four get commented out, okay? And then I have my centroids there and I'm going to plot this now, all right? And it should show the cluster, but it's not very good. Let's go ahead and save this. And now I'm going to try to run it, Let's see clear. Okay, that's my original data. Oh, X is not the fun. So DTM LSA is the name I've been using. So the simple solution is just to rename it. All right, so now I can try that again. That's the original data over there. And there you can see, there's my new data. Two clusters. <clears throat> Basically, all of these are, there's a green cluster here somewhere. I'm not sure where it is. I assume this star is probably the one that was made green, but it's probably underneath that star. So really then, we would expect this to be one cluster, that to be one cluster, correct guys? Do you see that? Yeah. Yep. So what can we do? What are some suggestions? It's just, it's a problem with our data. It's really a problem with our data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a little trick that, that will hopefully show you why this happened. The richness of our original data was not there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add more words in common between the sentences in machine learning and the sentences in sports. So I'm going to say, I like soccer and TV. And I'm going to say soccer is great to watch on TV. You can see that now there's a little bit more relation there. And I'm going to say machine learning, it's super fun. Python is super, super cool for learning. And <clears throat> statistics is cool too for machines. I'm just going to use machine for machine for a machine. Data science is fun for learning. Python is super great. Right, you can see I 
took words from the group that belonged to data science and I, and I made sure that they appeared in multiple, in the same sentences, just like here. It's basically, it's like I'm adding stronger links in the data. So let's see if just that little change made a difference. <clears throat> and you can see then where I'm going with this. All right, so there's the original data. Notice that the plot changed now, right? Why did it change? Because I changed the features. So the features then remap the space to the, to, the, to the compressed dimensionality. So now it seems like there's like these clusters here. So let's now, you can see that a little bit better, right? I have two over here. Maybe these two are the sports. I don't know. These could be sports. These could be the machine learning ones. You see how there's two clusters now? And now there's one more sample. So we can actually corroborate this with our data. So if I look at this vector here, <clears throat> what, what would you conclude? Did it work or are we still in trouble? It worked. It worked, right? Very good observation because <clears throat> these five zeros map to the first five sentences. So it basically said those five sentences belong to cluster zero. And then these two over here map to the last two sentences. And it basically said those two belong to another cluster. So you see how you as a human were able to discern that and the algorithm with just a, a little slight play of the terms worked. So obviously when you're using Twitter or RSS feeds, is it better to use longer, slightly longer sentences or shorter ones? Longer ones, right? Because the longer ones give you a high, a more likelihood of having common terms. <clears throat> So does this make sense, guys? I covered a lot of material today, but that's really all I wanted to cover, to be honest. Um, the only other thing would be now to, in the math plot, you know, to actually color code the results, but, you know, we've, you know, to color code these with the labels and things like that, but you've, you've seen it. And in particular, the important thing is that you have this, right? So for these samples, you have the output. And the output tells us that it worked. We created two clusters in exactly as we wanted it to be. <clears throat> Make sense? Yes, sir. Great. Well, it seems like it makes sense. So that's good. Um, there's a lot more that can be done with this, a lot more. Um, you can measure similarity between vectors, but that's something, um, you know, there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot that could be covered. But I think as far as <clears throat> unsupervised learning, just to summarize, so today we saw, I'm going to switch back to the, um, the whiteboard, actually. Right, so today we saw kind of a wrap up in two videos, this video and the previous video. We saw, so you guys should be seeing the whiteboard here. All right, so today we covered on supervised learning, which are methods that can be applied to just X. You don't need Y, right? So we looked at two things, k-means, k-means, and also singular value decomposition. Singular value decomposition was for decompression. And k-means was for clustering. Right, and then you saw examples of both of these, how we went from sentences to the bag of words approach. 
where we could go from a dimensionality of, we had, I think, 13 to a dimensionality of two. <clears throat> and then basically we have two applications of this. One is to plot and visualize the data. The other one is just to make your data set smaller. Make data set smaller. Right, and those are the two applications. And then in K means it's the clustering for clustering. So if we had, you know, samples like that, it can pick <coughs> clusters. <coughs> so even if you don't have a Y, it'll assign, you know, as you saw in the example, one Y. Right, and that's, that's basically it. <coughs> and with that, we are done with machine learning this semester. So as you can see, we've covered supervised learning and a lot of topics there. We covered uh, reinforcement learning, and then now we've covered you know, the basics of unsupervised learning. So that's it. That's it. Today is the last lecture. Next Monday, as you know, you have your project presentations and then the Kara's homework, the last one, will be due by that Friday. No, no later than the Friday because I have to start grading and then your final exam will be during uh, finals week, your written exam. All right, so with that, we are done for today. <clears throat> if you have any questions, stay over. I'll stay a couple of minutes to answer questions. Otherwise, <clears throat> I'll see you guys on Tuesday.